Yesterday went walking downtown Los Angeles with Nancy Loveland and her daughter. We met many homeless people. Some with serious health issues. One gentleman had sores on his arms that, oh my gosh, he had like had cavities and holes and just talking about it I get creeped out. And there's another woman who uh, had a tumor in her abdomen just like you would see in Africa, not Los Angeles. Um, these people need help. So one of the things that Nancy and her daughter kept asking is, who do you call, Mark? Who do you call? And to be honest, I don't know. We met a gentleman on the streets 37 years, 37 years. We met many people out here for far too long. We ran into Jocelyn. Jocelyn, you might know from Invisible People, a wonderful woman, but she's been out here 15 years. So who do you call? Who do you call? Who do you call? Now I know in the UK, they have a program called No Second Night Out and Street Link where you can tweet, you can call, you can send an email. There's an app where if you see a person sleeping rough, what they call homelessness in the UK, an outreach worker comes out 24 seven and helps them. And also there's help if you are a rough sleeper, a person homeless, you can contact through the app, through the website, through, you can tweet them and an outreach com worker comes out. Now, please, I'm not criticizing any homeless services here. It's just lack of funding, lack of resources, lack of housing. And I know, I mean, gosh, um, Los, uh, Los Angeles Homeless Service Authority, they send out 50 outreach teams every day. Oh my gosh, 50. But Los Angeles County is huge. And there's over 50,000 homeless people here, according to the last count. And you know, the count's always just a good guess. The number is so much more. So there's programs like rapid rehousing. Now rapid rehousing, let's say if you're a family or an individual and you're out here experiencing homelessness and there's a good chance that you might be able to work towards self-sufficiency in a year or whatever, rapid rehousing will pay your rent. Great program. Permanent supportive housing for people that are vulnerable, the most vulnerable, gonna close to death that use up majority of, you know, services, uh, paramedics, emergency room. I mean, I agree with that. Let's get them into permanent supportive housing. It saves lives and saves taxpayer money. But then there's this gap like Jocelyn who might not necessarily qualify for permanent supportive housing. And, oh my gosh, she's a, got a felony. She's been homeless 15 years. The chances of her getting a job Oh my gosh, that's where there's this gap. Now, why we need to fill that gap, we need to stop, is because somebody like Jocelyn, who may not be vulnerable now, the longer she stays on the streets, the more she will be vulnerable. So, who, who can we call? Who can the general public, I believe, and, and you know, being with Nancy and her daughter yesterday really reinforced that I think the general public want to do something, they want to take action, they want to help, but they don't know what to do. There's a huge in information gap, education gap, and you know, who do they call? Who do I call? I don't know. I mean, here in Los Angeles, the winter shelter program is happening, and I know that's seasonal and people can get help there, but you know, during other times of the year, I don't know who to call. I don't, and I'm well connected here in Los Angeles. And I'm just using Los Angeles as an example. This is an issue in every city that we need to solve.